The topic is the role of color Doppler in assessment of chronic liver disease. Liver is a very delicate topic, lot of uh, poetry in all languages on liver. But today we are not going to discuss poetry, we are going to discuss the role of uh, color Doppler in assessment of chronic liver disease. The vascular anatomy in the liver, normally we know that in all organs in the body there is arterial system and one venous system. But in liver, there are three types of vessels. Portal vein is taking blood towards the liver, hepatic artery is taking blood towards the liver, and hepatic veins, they are taking blood away from the liver. So, there is special terminology in the liver and uh, special waveform patterns which has to be taken in consideration while analyzing the different spectra. So we know very well that uh, the hepatic veins, they are taking blood away from the liver and they run craniocordially and uh, the portal veins, they are running transversely. So if we want to image portal veins, we have to place our probe in the transverse manner, but if we want to image hepatic veins, they run in a craniocordial manner, so we have to tilt our probe craniocordially if we intend to image these hepatic veins and they are draining into the, uh, that IVC. So uh, I won't go in much detail of these text slides, but obviously uh, color Doppler is used for assessment of portal hypertension and chronic liver disease, and uh, assessment of focal liver lesions, and uh, pre and post procedural assessment of uh, tips and other procedures. So before heading to the color Doppler, we have to see the morphological pattern in the liver first and uh, we see the texture of the liver. Is it fine, coarse, nodular? In chronic liver disease, we know that the texture is coarse, then it becomes nodular liver and uh, these changes are first uh, taken into consideration and then we we'll switch on the color to see further details. What do we see on B mode findings? The normal liver or hepatomegaly, atrophy, fatty changes or increased attenuation or acrotexture or and the surface of the liver, any nodularity or any focal lesions which are the complication of chronic liver disease. You can see very well here that liver is quite nodular and quite coarse liver. So when you see that sort of liver, there's no doubt that there is established chronic, advanced degree of chronic liver disease. But uh, actually the color Doppler is used to see the minimal or the earliest changes in the liver. When there's the earliest changes, there, first of all, there is blood flow patterns are changed. The every vessel in the body has a specific Doppler signature. So, is the surname is changed or the middle name is changed or the first name is changed, it will give a clue or to a specific pattern. So, while investigating chronic liver disease, we have to see those patterns. And we know that with hepatocellular disease, portal flow decreases and arterial flow increases early in the process. And you can see here how to take the portal vein flow. Portal vein is taking an oblique course while entering the porta hepatis and luckily we don't have to play with the keys to get a very good angle, a little bit of angle correction is definitely needed and uh, 
second important point that any vessel taking blood towards the probe will appear red and uh, any blood taking that blood away from the liver will appear blue it's not the arterial or the venous that is very very important point so red means that any vessel taking that uh, blood towards the liver so technique how to take a good section that is important normally when we scan do abdominal scan or liver scan we ask the patient to take a deep breath in and hold it there so it's very very important that distend your tummy and take a deep breath but while doing liver doppler we can't do that with deep inspiration because we know that when we take a deep breath in the diaphragm moves down and the pressure is increased and the vessels are compressed so we'll get erroneous uh, results if we ask the patient to take a deep breath while performing that doppler so while doing liver doppler we have to do that in a neutral position neutral respiration a neutral breath hold so that's you have to train the patient first before start starting the scan you were training to the patient that when i say stop you have to stop over there to don't have to take a deep breath in that is very very important point so deep inspiration will flatten wave form and portal vein velocity and there are different values if we uh, see the reference values in any book or any chart you can see that with deep inspiration the size of portal vein is different and with neutral respiration that size is different in the same manner the velocity of portal vein or that uh, hepatic uh, veins will be different with deep inspiration and with a neutral breath hold so is uh, very important to train your patient to take a breath hold while you are scanning that uh, patient respiration that's a very important point and second is if there is lot of bowel gas you have to displace that bowel gas turn the patient to one side or gentle movement or gentle pressure with the probe and obviously if the thin lean patient you can have high frequency if it's a very obese patient you can go for a low frequency we know that the higher the frequency the more is the penetration the less is the penetration and better is the resolution lower the frequency we have more penetration so if there is an obese patient you can use a low frequency if there is a thin lean patient you can use a high frequency probe another important point that uh, while you take that uh, doppler uh, images doppler calculations then again it's important that you have to switch over to a lower frequency we are imaging on a higher frequency the normal imaging is done on a higher frequency but if you want to do the doppler negotiations then you have to lower the frequency as you are doing scanning on 3.5 and if you are switching over to doppler studies you have to go for 3 megahertz or 2.5 megahertz if you want to get better results state of hydration is important fasting and postprandial that's very very important matter because when doing liver doppler in fasting condition the velocity will be different and sometime is diagnostic because in earliest portal hypertension changes in earliest changes can only be appreciated on a postprandial scan when normally there should be a 40 to 50% increase in the flow so the state of uh, patient fasting and then state of hydration patient should be well hydrated and blood pressure should be noted and if patient is taking some medicine like uh, indirol some other medicines which are, which can alter 
portal vein or hepatic vein blood flow that should be noted in your report while noting these uh, all these parameters we know that uh, diameter varies while we take a deep inspiration doing wall salva and uh, fasting and postprandial so that must be noted the condition of that patient fasting dam velocity is 20 to 40 cm per second and postprandial is 25 to 50 percent increase and it becomes more than 40 centimeter per second so as i mentioned earlier that uh, normally there are three vessels in the liver in all normal organs there are only two arterial system and venous system but in liver there is a hepatic artery taking blood to the liver then portal vein taking blood to the liver and hepatic veins taking blood away from the liver. So there are special terms used while describing the flow patterns in the liver that is called phasicity and uh, then periodicity, pulsatility, hepatopetal flow and hepatofugal. Phasicity is the minor variation in the waveform due to respiration. You can see here while patient is having breathing normal breathing there will be very little variation ups and downs in the that portal vein waveform and periodicity is something different that is you see here this is phasicity little bit of variation due to respiration yeah, I told you that any vessel taking blood to the liver towards the probe that is red and uh, any blood going away from the liver that appears blue. So here this is hepatic vein appearing blue, portal vein appearing red and little bit of variation that is phasicity. Then periodicity is this is hepatic vein, uh, this is sorry portal vein and you can see here this dipping, little bit of dipping is due to the, on cart, that cystly, there is arterial cystly, due, during the cardiac cycle, the pulsations are transferred into the portal vein flow. And those pulsations which are transmitted in the portal vein flow, that is called periodicity. This very, very gentle dipping can be seen. And when due to sinusoid damage there is lot of blood shunting this periodicity is increased that's very very important diagnostic point i'll show in the next forthcoming slides the other effect on the periodicity is that uh, the hepatic veins they are also transmitting pressure because the right heart is not having any barrier between hepatic vein and right heart and IVC. So the right heart impulse is transferred to the liver and that is transmitted to the portal vein flow pattern and that also adds to this periodicity. So this is a very very important point. So normal portal vein Continuous forward flow, that is hepatopetal flow, the flow going towards the liver, that is hepatopetal, and going away from the liver, that is hepatofugal. Low velocity, non-pulsatile, and I told you there are respiratory variations, and these respiratory variations, is this is called physicity. So these velocity variations in the hepatic and portal vein secondary to cardiac activity that is called periodicity and you can see this dipping in the portal vein waveform and this in magnified view this is quite clear you see this this is a venous flow not arterial flow but you can see this dipping over here which is the transmitted waves from the hepatic artery and hepatic vein waveform in the that uh, portal vein flow 
when there is uh, sinusoidal damage in chronic liver disease then obviously this there is a reversal of flow you can see red and blue is mixed and that is due to that sinusoidal damage and then forward flow is not there rather you can see both red and blue color so technique is very important if you haven't set your settings properly then you might not see any flow over there but because if you have set your machine on very high or low velocity then you won't be able to see the flow if you set that uh, velocity parameter then you can see so erroneously you might say there is portal vein thrombosis while actually it's not there so angle correction is important as i mentioned in the beginning that it takes portal vein entering the liver at a almost obliquely little bit of angle correction is needed because we need to uh, record the correct velocity and sample volume is that uh, gate sample gate normally if we want to do the qualitative analysis then we can open up this gate and if we want to do the quantitative then we need a definite sample volume size so that will lead to this spectrum according to our sample gate and sample volume so velocity varies inversely to diameter in deep inspiration normal diameter of portal i told you that we do it not uh, with deep inspiration but always with neutral breath hold so normal diameter less than 13 on quiet respiration on deep inspiration this diameter can be increased and normal velocity is 20 to 40 cm per second with neutral breath breath hold not on deep inspiration as dr amjad iqbal has shown you a slide that uh, normally splenic vein is sorry uh, splenic vein is bringing blood from spleen and going towards the liver so this is liver this is pancreas and splenic vein is behind the pancreas so anything going towards the probe that is red and going away from the probe that is blue so we know that this is the normal sequence that in splenic vein the flow is hepatopetal going towards the liver normally but if pressure is increased this is reverse if we see red over here that will reflect that uh, there is a hepatopetal flow so here you can see again this is red blue and little bit tinge of slight red is seen here that might be due to earliest changes of portal hypertension so normally there should be absolute blue color over here so splenic vein profile size 5 to 10 mm and velocity 12 to 18 cm splenic artery ri should be less than 0.7 we know that anything more than 0.75 that is abnormal so here this is ri the resistive index the velocity is angle dependent but the resistive index these indices are not angle dependent so here ri is 0.49 which is absolutely normal this is normal liver so this is showing that low resistance flow there is no hepatocellular damage leading to high resistance so splenic artery splenic vein patent and hepatopetal splenic vein less than 10 mm and splenic artery more than 0.75 that reflects there are different studies and smri is also increased so it's more than 0.8 that will reflect in this increased resistance parameters will reflect chronic liver disease in splenic artery and splenic vein so portal hypertension 
normally this is hepatopetal flow going away from the spleen going towards the liver but in portal hypertension the flow is this is spleen and you see it's red normally it should be blue this is blue so is this is qualitative analysis if we want to have quantitative we can see that above the baseline or below the baseline so because it's going towards the spleen so it's above the baseline so this is abnormal hepatic vein waveform it was first time described by abu yusuf an egyptian radiologist so he said that hepatic veins they have a crow feet appearance and multiphasic flow so because hepatic vein cardiac pulsations are transmitted in hepatic veins so they show a multiphasic pattern two downward dips and this is one upward dip due to atrial contraction so this a wave is very very important so hepatic veins i told you that if we want to see the hepatic vein we have to tilt our probe craniocordially and uh, we can see this crow feet pattern and two downward dips you see downward dips and this is a wave if liver is soft and there is good liver compliance then we can see these multiphasic wave form but if liver is stiff due to fibrosis then this wave form is flattened and we don't see a multiphasic wave form and that is very very important in the diagnosis of that uh, fibrotic and stiff liver you see normal wave form two downward waves and this a wave is the upward wave and we can see blue color while it's going down and above the wave form we can see the red color also so you see here downward waves little bit of uh, stiffness is there then that a wave is lost you see this during that cardiac cycle we must see this blush of red in hepatic veins most of the time the green uh, the blue color and red red blush must be seen here which reflects that a wave qualitative presence of a wave but in chronic liver disease liver becomes stiff due to fibrosis resulting in reduced liver compliance and marked damping of waveform marked fibrosis in the waveform is flattened and minimal degree change the a form a wave is dampened or absent and cut off value is 7 cm per second if it's less than that that will reflect that liver is stiff you see here here a wave is lost downward wave form is present but upward we don't see anything above the baseline and you see this blue color the hepatic veins are patent but no flow is seen above the baseline that reflects a stiff liver due to fibrosis hepatic artery wave form normally hepatic artery it 30 to 40 cm per second and end diastolic velocity is 10 to 15 cm per second and i as i mentioned earlier that the resistive index must be less than 0.75 if it's more than 0.75 that shows very high resistance flow and that is seen in chronic liver disease so in chronic liver disease ri is more than 0.75 and here in normal liver you can see the ri is is normal diastolic velocity and ri is 0.6 another important point the liver vascular index normally the diastolic velocity of uh, hepatic artery and portal vein velocity should be at par very near to each other you see here this in the normal liver this is portal vein wave form you have to open the sample volume that you can take both hepatic artery and uh, portal vein wave form simultaneously and you can see here both are nearly 
at the same level. But with the passage of time, the hepatic artery flow, flow increases and portal vein flow we know decreases when liver become that stiff, fibrotic. So then this configuration is changed. You see here again, still you can see that this portal vein and waveform and hepatic artery diastolic flow are having all the, almost the same value. But here you see that uh, portal vein is dilated and the diameter more than 13 mm and loss of respiratory variations, velocity decreased and congestive index, some people take congestive index that portal vein cross-sectional area divided by a mean portal vein velocity and that normal is less than 0.7. So that is again an important parameter in diagnosis of chronic liver disease. In portal hypertension, increased periodicity, brief spells of petrofugal flow, continuous petrofugal flow and marked periodicity coinciding with hepatic arterial systole and you see here this dipping is increased. You see here this dipping is markedly increased and this velocity variation ratio, some people are working on that, that the upper peak of portal vein is taken as V1, the lower dip is taken as V2, and the ratio is taken. In chronic liver disease, this ratio is more than 1.5. So portal hypertension, increased portosystemic gradients, normal less than 7 mm, in mild portal hypertension is 7 to 10 and there is risk of variceal bleeding. In portal vein flow, actually blood which enters the portal vein that is due to sinusoidal damage, there is blood shunting and uh, that's why there is lot of variation in the flow pattern. I'm just going to again show you this is the lot of dipping here and markedly increased periodicity can be seen here, you see. I'll just show another slide. This very wavy pattern of portal vein and here you can see very clearly because sinusoid they are damaged and you see here markedly increased, accentuated that dipping can be seen here and here this pattern is definitely just simulating an arterial flow while this is a portal vein flow and this is showing that due to liver architectural damage there is blood shunting so the arterial pulsations and hepatic vein pulsations they are transmitted in the portal vein and this accentuated pattern is seen in chronic liver disease. Thank you very much.